Hi guys and welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 858, Meeting. This chapter, let's just get that out of the way, was funny as fuck. I laughed throughout my live reaction and the gags were on point and I'm just like, I'm deceased, I ascended to heaven and I am just in paradise. This was perfect. <laughs> I really, really like this chapter. Sometimes I forget just how funny One Piece can be because I am not like a comedy person. I don't care too much for comedy, but One Piece humor is the best. It's just, yeah, it kills me every time. It's, ah, huh, yes, it's the best. Enough about that though, because I can't really talk forever about the gags, even though it was hilarious. Um, we got information, good information. We got the reason that Big Mom and the Giants hate each other because of Lola running off after being uh, set up to marry the prince of the giant race of Elbath, Loki? Uh, is, that, is that the actual translation? Or, <laughs> official translation. Waiting, waiting! Um, we got that explanation, um, which, you know, I. I'm not gonna dwell too much into that because I feel like that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, so let's move on to the next part because alliances, nice, I love it, yes. Okay, so we meet with Capone, we're all dressed up and bathed and the shots looking good as hell and Pedro and Jinpei and Carrot, just, yeah, all of them just looking great. Um, and Luffy at first, he's like, oh wait, that's Caesar. I did not see that coming though. I was like, oh, it's probably just a person who has a similar design to Caesar. I mean, pfft. I'm forgetting this is Oda we're talking about, and Oda does nothing like this. Like, everything has a reason. <laughs> um, I was talking about uh, this dude being Caesar's evil twin. <clears throat> it turned out just to be Caesar trying to disguise himself, as he always does. I don't know why I didn't see that coming. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I really like this. So Luffy was distracted by Caesar, and we find out what happened to him. Basically, Capone became the rook, and he got um, to watch over the factory where Capone was, whatever. And he had Caesar's heart, and was like, "Okay, you better go come work for me. I have this heart." Um, so that's Caesar's story. We go back to being like, "Okay, are we gonna form this alliance?" And Luffy's like, "Yeah, okay. If I can just like punch in the face one time." <laughs> That was the most, like, that was the most perfect Luffy thing for me because it's like, yeah, okay, we're, I can't ally myself with you if I, even if I hate you, but I just like, just one punch, just one punch and I'll be happy. <laughs> That's so Luffy because it's like, yeah, okay, I am, I know that this is the right path to take, but my, my self-interest tells me that I have to beat you up, so I must do it. Yeah, I love him so much. This goes perfectly into my Luffy analysis. I'm so happy that I made that before this chapter came out because it just, uh, it just confirms all the points I made. All the points I made. Okay, but I really, really like this chapter. We have um, the alliance comes. It, it, they ally, ally themselves by the end because Jinbei is like, so you all hate Big Mom. Yeah, okay, that's an alliance. Then you have one, one thing in common, and that's enough. That's all we need at this point. Um, and I'm expect I'm not expecting us to actually get to know what Capone's plan is. I feel like we're gonna uh, hear it's gonna be kind of like in Fishman Island when Jimmy was like, "I have this plan to take out Cody," and then we see like the first steps of the plan being acted out, and then we have a flashback to Jimbei telling the plan to them. Um, and we then we see the steps where it goes goes wrong. I think we're gonna have a similar setup to that because if we just see the plan now, then the thing is if. Capone tells us the, the plan in its entirety, next chapter, the plan will fail before we he, we get to step two. That's a certain. The only way that we know the plan will work, or at least kind of work, is if we don't hear the plan. I'm just saying that now. Um, but I really like this because having Caesar in as like this third way ally instead of just like being a, lack, a Capone lacking means that he'll have a much more significant role. And it makes the dynamic much better because Luffy obviously hates both of these people. <laughs> Which I I am in love with seeing Luffy of all people working with people he doesn't like because he's very specific um, about people that he wants around him and people he doesn't want to punch in the face. Uh, like he was very against like, are we really going to let Crocodile, Crocodile out of jail? Like, do you know what he did in Alabasta? Um, 
But it's really interesting when he then starts working with them because he's like, okay, we're gonna work together now, so we're gonna do this and that, and we're all strong and stuff like that. So I'm just really interested in seeing this. Also because post time skip Luffy, as I've mentioned a couple of times, is thinking a lot more, which is why it's significant that he's the one to be like, okay, what's the plan? Because if you think back to, even if you just think back to law, he was like, a plan? <laughs> I don't care about a plan. Uh, here he's like, okay, what's the plan? This is a Yonko, we need a plan. Because <laughs> Luffy's not stupid. He's like, yeah, okay, we're a little, a little bit out of our depths here. That's why he's agreed to this in the first place. Um, but we also have Sanchi pointing out the very obvious things that, okay, if I don't return soon, people will notice that I'm gone. I need to prepare for this ceremony if we're going to pretend the wedding is going to come. Uh, if, if, the, if we're going to pretend the wedding is actually being a thing here. So at some point, they need to like slowly get Sanchi back to uh, the castle. Is, does the castle have a name? Uh, <laughs> wow, I just got completely out of it there. But does the castle have a name? I don't remember. Big Mom's castle? The castle of... I don't know. Um... But yeah, so they need to get Sanji back. It shouldn't be that hard because they have mirrors and obviously they are using Brulee as a key. Um, I found it really funny when uh, like we had that one panel of Brulee and she'd been washed and uh, was put in a pretty dress as well. I thought that was really funny and you just had like the sparkles. Um, but again, I'm not gonna talk about the gags. Um, generally, this was just a really interesting chapter. Um, I feel like, yeah, I, I feel like I don't want to get way too into it because I feel like I just talked about a lot of things concerning Luffy at the very least in the analysis that I uploaded like late last night from it got uploaded like 2 a.m. it took like three hours for it to process um <laughs> but yeah um so yeah I'm just gonna well if you want to watch Luffy th stuff go watch that analysis because it actually it it somehow hits a lot of the things that you see in Luffy in this chapter which I mean I'm so proud of myself um but yeah I'm really happy about this chapter. A lot of information, a lot of like connections coming because I've said, yeah, okay, we haven't seen Peckhams and Caesar needs to be brought it back into play and Capone, what's his role? I've said that for the last like 10 chapters. Um, and now we have them all together. The only one thing that I want to point out is that we still haven't seen Pound in like forever and now we have uh, both of his girls being relevant. Uh, which we, it, I believe if we go back to when we first uh, met him, uh, he asked Cragger, um, can I just see my girls uh, Lola and Chiffon? Which means that he obviously has no idea what the heck has happened to Lola and Chiffon. I mean, what the heck? So either at that point he was lying because whatever, or he's just completely out of it. Which, I mean, he must come back into play somehow. I feel like it wasn't a coincidence that we met him. Um, and that, because if we just needed a guy to tell us random stuff, we could just have met a random person. But we ended up meeting Shifan and Lola's father. So yeah, that has to be relevant, re relevant somehow. Um, um, I feel like he has connections. I'm not quite sure. I mean, he was buried in the ground for a long time. Um, and he just drinks apple juice all the guy. <laughs> apple juice, apple juice, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in seeing Pound coming back because I feel like there was a reason for him uh, being one of the first people we met and him obviously being Lil and Chiffon's father, as I've said like 3,000 times now. Um, so I'm interested in seeing him coming back. I believe he will be anti-Big Mom, obviously, since she abused his girls. Um, or their girls, I don't know. Uh, don't want to call Big Mom Chiffon Lil's mother at this point, because, you know, abuse. Um, but yeah, I'm really, really fond of Chiffon, and I'm really, really fond of Praline as well. I really hope that we get to see more of Praline. I really, really like her. I think of like the minor uh, Big Mom children, I, she might be my favorite. I really like Praline, and we haven't really seen a lot of her, but I just, I think she's adorable. <laughs> and she's really big as well, um, but unimportant. But yeah, I think that's overall what I have to say, because there was a, just a lot of explanation and then a lot of gags, which the tooth thing, I just, I was the best, okay? Um, so yeah, I'd recommend watching my Luffy analysis because it might actually be really relevant at the moment. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description, and if you like anything that I have to say, you can leave a thumbs up at the video, leave in the comments below what you thought of this chapter, and until next time, bye!